future of American skating tomorrow night. Now, back to today. The Daytona 500 comes up Sunday down in Florida. Both Tulsa-backed cars made it into the race today. Now, if you're looking someone to root, for someone to root for on Sunday, how about the number 21 Sitco Petroleum car driven by Kyle Petty or the number 68 Purolator car driven by Derek Cope? They will start side by side in the 10th row on Sunday. Today was qualifying day, and it was marked by five crashes. Cale Yarborough. Now, this crash isn't so bad, but look what it starts behind it today. Oh, no. I mean, that's your worst fear of the broken arrow at rush hour, right? Fortunately, nobody seriously hurt in any of these wrecks, even despite this one. J.D. McDuffie, look at this. The car is engulfed in flames, and this is the driver's biggest fear, is fire at the racetrack. McDuffie goes into the infield. Finally, the dirt helps put some of the fire out. He's going to get out of the car, barely suffered minor burns, believe it or not, through all of this. He is not going to be in the race, but at least he is not hurt seriously. All right, college basketball tonight. A couple of surprises. Really wasn't much of a factor in the ball game. And that's highs and low fives, too. Finally tonight, the stock car racing. A strange sport where the most famous event doesn't end the season, it begins it. I had a chance to go to the Daytona 500 yesterday for the very first time, and it was something. First of all, it was noisy. Listen to this. Real loud. It also, of course, gives you a chance. I didn't even get to see this wreck. This was the Richard Petty wreck. I'm down in the pits when this happens. Believe it or not, Richard Petty does all of this to himself and left the hospital last night in as good a shape as you can be after going through something like that. Hardly any broken bones at all. And while you were watching Bobby Allison outduel his son, Davey, we were watching the Tulsa Purolator crew and the Tulsa Sitco racing crew. Go after Daytona and the big prize. And tonight at 10, a special report on Tulsa's race for recognition. Kind of fun, folks. I forgot part of the story there. I messed up. I had one more page. I've been gone a couple of days. <laughs> you we'll get talk those about days it. off in the Florida sun and you just get too relaxed to do it. your well, job. We were going to hear from Derek Cope and Kyle Petty. That's my fault. You'll hear from them plenty tonight at 10. We'll Brain turned into a carburetor. Or something. <laughs> yeah, something like all that. All that noise yeah. had him all scrambled. Well, coming up next, making sure athletes make the gray. A hometown winner over Creighton. Finally, over the weekend, I got the chance maybe to witness a little Tulsa sports history, something to tell our grandchildren about someday. Stock car racing is a sport any of us who've ever been behind the wheel can relate to. And now two Tulsa companies are plunging headlong into NASCAR racing with the same dream we all have in life, to take the checkered flag. This story actually begins at the corner of 61st and Yale. The two subjects, Sitco Petroleum and Pura Later Oil Filters, next door neighbors. But from there, the story becomes as different as that address in Daytona Beach, Florida. The day before the race, things are going so well for the Sitco team that famous crew chief Leonard Wood cannot hide his excitement. I guess I've been in it long enough now that it, it doesn't really bother me at all. You know, I mean, I don't really see any difference. Five bays away, the Purolator team, only two and a half months old, is not nearly so laid back. It's a team that was surprised to even qualify for this race. There is a lot to be done. Dawn, race day at Daytona. While the Sitco boys are putting the polish on their T-Bird, Purolator's still painting. But the fever pitch of the crews is not shared by the drivers. Derek Cope slept just fine last night. Like a baby. <laughs> I don't have any problems sleeping. I, you know, the hard part's over. That uh, making the race, the qualifying, that's the tense moments. Right now, uh, it's uh, it's another day at the office for me. The reason people are getting nervous is because there's so many people in the garage area. <laughs> I don't think they let this many people in the locker room before the Super Bowl, so I don't know why they let them in the garage area before this race, but uh, I'm just going to try to get out of the way for a while. Kyle ought to be used to all this. He's the son of the famous Richard Petty and has been to Daytona every year he's been alive. Derek took a different route. Well, you know, I, I played baseball, and I got hurt pretty severely in my knee, and it ended my career in 1979, and my dad was a top fuel drag racer on the NHRA race circuit, and he uh, always had wanted me to drive race car, and I just got into it, and I was I was good at it, I took right to it, and one thing progressed, and, you know, my dad had a lot of insight in the program about becoming a good spokesman for products and things like that, and, and that's what, uh, you know, has helped me get to the point I am right now. Derek says that what a driver can do outside his car might be more important than inside. 
keeping the customers and the sponsors satisfied. Ties in our distributors, and they feel like that they're a part of it. Uh, they worked a lot of their advertising around it. And uh, just like yesterday, for example, we had 250 customers, and every one of them felt like that that was their car, and Kyle Petty was driving for them. It's going to sell a lot of oil films for us. It's going to particularly help our distribution throughout the U.S., particularly in the southeast. We're really strong. We have dominant market share. And just from what I hear and the conversations around this track, I mean, it's great. You see the Pure Later racing jackets around here that been, people have been wearing for eight years. Yeah, we're back. What he's referring to is Pure Later's return to NASCAR after eight years out of it. Ironically, the two Tulsa cars qualified side by side. They are 11 rows back, but five rows ahead of one of the giants of racing, Bill Elliott. The two teams have very different strategies. Pure Later just wants to finish. Before you can become a winner, you have to have experience. You have to have laps on these racetracks. So we're going to do everything we can to set up our car to try to finish the race, which means we will be a little more conservative than some of the people, but that's the way we have to do it this time. Maybe the next time we come here, we might not have to do it that way. The only way for the Sitco team is the one that would win. This would probably be the one, you know, uh, this one every year would be the one. If God said you could win one race a year, it'd be Daytona. So, uh, you know, and that's what everybody shoots for, and that's what we're shooting for today. Finally, at half past noon, the race begins. The noise? Well, you tell me. From the pits, the race is, frankly, a study in tedium. You can't see much. All you can do is fidget and wait for the first word of trouble. Today, that honor goes to Purolator. A rock hits Derek's windshield, and while everyone else is going 185 miles an hour, he's cooling his heels, waiting for new glass. Down pit road, things are going much better for Sitco. Wouldn't you love to get that kind of service from your gas station? It was not a particularly good day for either team. Kyle got to watch his father Richard nearly kill himself in a spectacular wreck. All the while, his car just didn't have the spark it had shown in practice. Purolator's problems were easier to see. Just after Richard Petty's wreck, Cope's coupe blew a rear tire, just barely avoiding the wall, but did enough damage that when it came into the pits, the car that wouldn't run real well couldn't stop either. The repair job looked like something you or I might think of. A little spit, a lot of tape, a prayer, it was back out on the track, but way behind the leaders. Neither car could gain any ground on winner Bobby Allison, but both cars finished. That was fine for Purolator, but for Sitco, finishing 18th was no way to spend a Sunday. Over there, just... Well, not when you ain't got enough horsepower, you ain't got enough, uh, you know, these don't, motors don't have enough power to pull a grease string out of a pig's butt. It's about what it amounts to. And, uh, you know, when you ain't got no power and something happens in front of you, you got to get on the brakes and then get back on the gas again, then you're setting up, waiting for somebody to nail you from behind or to get up on top of you or anything. In its first race ever as a team, Purolator finished 27th and loved it. But all in all, uh, for the kind of grief we had today with the broke windshield early going a lap down and then the tire blowing, now we finished the race, so we'll have to say that uh, it was a pretty good day all in all. But all in all, we finished the car still in one piece. Uh, it's a good start on the year when you finish Daytona. Yeah. That's, that's the, the biggest one. When you start there and you can finish the race, even though you had a lot of trouble, we, we feel good about it. And so the traveling road show moves on. A 30-week odyssey that next week rolls through Richmond. Bashed bumpers and all, the local boys will try again to make good. Hmm. And they move on next week. I hope you all at home enjoyed that as much as I did. I had no idea that so many people and so many things happened behind the scenes. Oh, rocks and wheels. and It's a whole different thing from what you saw yesterday if you watched it on Channel 6. The race is a... I didn't see the Richard Petty wreck. Yeah. And I was less than 200 yards from it and I didn't see it happen. And it was... A, it's just... It's a whole different view. And we're going to be following both teams throughout the year and keeping track of it. Good, it's also that's a whole different culture down there. Too. Oh, it certainly is. Yes, it is. Uh, well, uh, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Up next, an Oklahoma educator works to preserve Oklahoma's musical heritage. Here